Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and thank you for joining me today. A few days ago I was a guest designer over at the Simon Says Stamp blog where I made an art journal layout. And in case you haven't seen that video, I am sharing it today on my channel. And for the background today, let's do a fun technique. So today I'm going to use the jelly plate for creating my background. And although we are uh, usually working with the jelly plate on loose papers, I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with it directly on your uh, art journal book. So usually you apply some uh, paint on that plate and then you use just a piece of paper and print out whatever uh, color is on your plate. But I'm going to use it as a stamp on top of my art journal and you will see that I'm going to get some interesting results even on the spine. And just because today I want to play with color, I'm going with vibrant colors from the Dilutions collection. I am going to start with lemon zest and squeezed orange. I am going to use a spatula and apply a little bit of paint directly on my plate. And then I'm going to use my brayer to mix the colors, but you will see that I, I'm not trying to mix them up and create a brand new color. I want to have both shades on my plate. And now I can use it as a stamp and stamp directly on my art journal book. Notice how I can hold it up and down. I haven't uh, gone all the way to the edges with the paint and this way I can still grab it without making a mess on my hands. So as long as you see paint on top of your plate, you can go ahead and stop again and again until your plate is pretty much clean. Jelly printing is a great way to create interesting re results on your uh, original backgrounds and there are so many techniques to use it, it's really fun and I just wanted to show you today that you can use it directly on a book. You see that I do get um, paint on my spine and if you have some spots that are empty, it really adds to the final result and texture. And once you have a base color on your art journal, you can go ahead and make it look even more interesting. So I'm going to do some stenciling now over my plate. I'm going to use this gorgeous red. This is Postbox Red by Dilutions. I'm going to spread it out with my brayer. And I'm going to use one of those stencils. These are paper stencils by Faber-Castell. And um, I'm going to pull out a print. And now my plate has a nice design on it which I am going to stamp directly on top of my page. And you can see that I am getting some interesting results. You can go crazy with this plate. You can add even more colors, make uh, designs on top of your plate, like with stencils or with uh, specialty tools. But I am going to stop here and you can see that I am using my baby wipe to somehow blend the background. But I'm making sure that I keep that beautiful design from the stencil and the blending of colors. And you can make it as busy as you want. I decided to stop here because I'm going to do a lot of things on top and I don't want to have a too busy of a background. Now, one of uh, the things that I love about the jelly plate is uh, what stays on top of the plate once you pull off one print. So you will see what I mean. I'm going to use some scrap paper here and pull off one print. And what stays here is a beautiful texture to add on your uh, pages. So I'm going to do that as a finishing uh, touch with my jelly plate. And if you think that this is a messy process, think about it again. It's not messy at all. And you can see that I am uh, actually cleaning my jelly plate and my brayer on top of my page and everything is clean now. Now all you have to do is to use a baby wipe over this plate and the brayer and they are ready to store. So now to add a little bit of texture on my background, I'm going to use this stamp by Dilutions. Since I went with Dilutions paints, I decided to go with Dilutions stamps as well. I am stamping at the background with archival ink, which is permanent, and uh, I am using orange blossom. So it's uh, very close to the colors that I have at the background, and this is going to create a nice subtle background. And here is a closer look to both of those pages. And now I'm going to use a black marker and draw a frame. I always like to have a frame on my pages. I think they give a nice finishing touch. So I'm freehanding this border. 
and then I'm going to use a black marker and color outside of this line. The black on the frame is going to help the inside of my page to pop even more at the end. Of course, to color this area, you can use black gesso or a black acrylic paint, whatever you feel it's convenient for you. I think that going all over with a black marker is uh, the quickest way. Now with a thin brush, I am going just outside that frame that I have drawn and I am using this uh, paint by Dilusions to draw one more line. It doesn't have to be perfect, remember this is art journaling. So I am going to go all around it and this is going to be a vine uh, where uh, leaves and uh, flowers come out from. You will see what I mean uh, later on. And finally, I am going to do some splashes with gesso. So I am diluting with water a little bit of gesso and with a thin brush, I'm going to do some splashes. This is the finishing touch for my background and I want to have a little bit of white at the back because I, I always use my white gel pen to add highlights on my focal points and this is going to help everything come together at the end. And this is where the inspiration for this page came out from. These are two gorgeous stamp sets by Stampendus. And when I see big bold designs such as those sunflowers, I always think of my art journal and how I can use them there. So I'm going to stamp everything with black archival ink. I'm going to end up having a bunch of those uh, leaves since I don't know how many of them I'm going to use on my final page. And I'm going to end up as well with two of those sunflowers. And instead of fuzzy cutting everything with my scissors, I'm lucky to have uh, the matching dies for all those images. And what is great about those Stampedus dies is that they cut out exactly where the black line is, so you don't, you don't end up with a die cut that has a border. You can see what I mean here. No border, just outside those black lines. So now I'm going to uh, stick everything down on my page. For doing so, I'm using my matte medium by Ranger. I'm going to decide where everything is going to go and stick everything down. As I'm sticking the thing, things down, I'm going to make sure that I go over them with gel medium. And this is going to ensure that uh, every one of those little images are non-porous, so I can color them later on by using my big brush markers. And again now with my thin brush I am using uh, fresh lime which is the exact same color as uh, the one I used for the border and I'm going to draw the stems for the flowers as well as for all those little leaves as if they are coming out from the border. And as I am doing that, just to remind you that as always you can find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using today including color names and everything else down below in the description area as well as on the blog. So after sticking everything down and connecting those leaves with the vine, I'm using my white gel pen to add some uh, interest on the border. So you see that I am drawing some lines, I am dividing that black area into sections. And with a white marker, I'm going to color in some of them white. 
and you end up with a striking border. I really love how this uh, comes out. Now I'm going to use my big brush markers and go over all those images to color them in. You see how easy it is to blend the color? Just because I have covered everything with gel medium, the surface is non-porous so I can easily move the ink around. This ink is uh, Indian ink and it dries permanent. But before it dries you do have uh, a few minutes to move the ink around and do the blending. Of course you can use your favorite coloring method to do all this, but when I'm working on my art journal I don't care about having everything perfect like um, color copy coloring perfect, so I just go ahead and do that with uh, my finger. It gives me a lot of pleasure. I am going to go back over the leaves with a darker marker now to add some shading and then I am going to go again on each one of those leaves and add a little bit of brown at the tips of those leaves. And by using this shading technique with my big brush markers, you can see how the leaves do not end up looking flat. You can tell which leaf is in front of which one. And it really gives a nice dimension on my page. I am adding a little bit of shading on the stems. And now that I have finished with my green color, I am going to go ahead and use a thin uh, black pen. And I'm going to define the lines. And now for coloring uh, the sunflowers, I'm using again the same technique that I used for my leaves. I'm applying first the lightest color, which is yellow, and then I'm going to add a slightly darker color to add the shading. Again, I'm just touching the marker and blending out the color with my finger. And to deepen the shading even more, I'm going to add a touch of brown. And for the last part of my sunflower, I'm playing with my browns. So again, I'm using three different shades of brown, starting with the lightest color and going uh, to the middle one and to the darkest and blending everything out with my finger. And don't be afraid to use really dark colors for your shading. They really add a great dimension on your projects. Another one of my go-to techniques is to use a darker marker and create some shadows all around those images that I have uh, stuck down on my pages and this is going to help them pop even more against the background. I am using my white gel pen over those images and I am adding some highlights on the leaves and on the sunflowers and I really love the look of it. Just make sure that all the ink and uh, the paint is totally dry before you use this uh, pen and it's going to write beautifully. And now it's time to add my quote. For that I'm going with Create Your Own Sunshine and I'm using this uh, alphabet stamp set by My Favorite Things and uh, these letters are specifically designed so when you stamp them you can connect one letter to the next one and the final result is just beautiful. And I am stamping my quote with black archival ink. Now I can go on and on with my finishing touches. So when my quote was there, you can see the, how beautiful it looks. I am using my white gel pen to add a highlight on each and every letter. This is going to help my quote pop even more against the background. And uh, to finish it off, I'm also going to use my Nouveau Drops and I'm going to add some uh, dots here and there all over my pages because this is going to uh, add a whimsical touch on my layout. And I'm also going to add some dots at the centers of my sunflowers. And now all that's left to do is to add the date. And that was the art journal for today, I hope you had fun and got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment 
and here are some close-up photos of the project. Thank you all for watching.